Okay, so we're in module 14 and we're talking about payroll. So this is section two where I want to show you how to work with the payroll items. Now payroll items are going to be anything you add to or deduct from an employee's paycheck. You need to set those up before you set up your employees because once you set up the employees, there'll be a place in there to tell it what payroll items. Now there's not going to be an icon here for this, so you're going to have to go through the menu. Now where you're going to go is employees and you're going to come down to where you see manage payroll items. And let's just start real quick with view or edit so I can show you what payroll items actually are. Okay, so here's a list of some of the different types of payroll items. So what you're going to notice is things like your sick pay, your regular time, overtime, vacation, those are considered a type. You've got hourly wage types, yearly salary, those are different types. Now you can also add things like, did the employee get a bonus? Do they get a mileage reimbursement, health insurance, maybe child support, things like that. Those are things you would have to add to this list because they're not currently here. Now the taxes, you're going to see there's federal and if you get on the list you'll see state. Those are actually added automatically when you set up your company file so the ones you'll have to add will be these odd things like right in this section. So I want to show you a couple of different ways you can add a payroll item. And let's add dental insurance. Now if you come down to the bottom and click on payroll item, there's your new edit delete like you're familiar with. So let's click on new. And QuickBooks gives you two different ways you can actually set up a new item. All right, you'll get an easy setup and a custom. Let's go through the easy setup real quick. So when I click next, it's going to ask me, is this item a compensation you're giving the employee? Is it going to be an insurance benefit, retirement, paid time off? Is it some other addition or deduction? This would be some other deduction. And then you're going to click next. Now the next thing that's going to pop up here, you're going to see in just a minute, is it's going to be loading your payroll setup and it's checking for all of the account information and all that kind of cool stuff. And then what happens is it pops up and says, is this deduction a wage garnishment, a union due, a donation to charity, or a miscellaneous deduction? So this would be a miscellaneous deduction. So I'm going to click Next. Now it is going to ask you the vendor. So that means that once you collect the payroll for this particular item, then you have to forward it. And who are you going to forward it to? So let's just say that it's Blue Cross. And if Blue Cross isn't in the list, it will ask you to set it up. Now, if you have a particular account number with that vendor, it's going to ask you to put it in here. And then it asks you, what is the payment frequency? So when I pay Blue Cross, do I pay this once a month? Do I pay it quarterly, annually? So I'm going to click Next, and then it says Finish. Now, if you notice, nowhere in there did it ask you, is this dental insurance, or give you a place to name it. So when you do the easy setup, that's kind of what it does. It puts it in here as a miscellaneous deduction because that's what we told it it was. And now I'd have to come in here and actually rename this. So I'd have to go through and choose edit. And then I could call this dental insurance. And then I would have a choice also if I wanted to track the expenses for this by the job or if this item happens to be inactive. But when I click Next here, it's going to ask me about the tax tracking. Now, let me just tell you what's happening here. It's now taking us through that custom setup that you saw there were two options. So what this basically says here is, based on the tax tracking type you pick from this list, this is how it's going to appear on your tax forms. So it's asking you, is this a compensation? Is it a non-qualifying plan distribution, a fringe benefit? So you can kind of see the choices down this list here. And this really isn't any of these. So I can just leave it on None for this. So I'll click Next. And it's going to ask me, is this item calculated based on quantity? Is it based on hours or neither? This would be on Neither. Is it going to be taken out of the gross or the net pay? We'll say Net. And then is there a default rate? And that means that are you going to charge the same exact rate for every employee or is it going to be different per employee? So if it's different per employee, then you can change it actually on the employee setup. 
So we're going to leave it on zero and we're going to hit finish. And now you'll see you have dental insurance. Now if I was setting up a new item using the actual custom setup, then I would start here and click next and it would ask me some of the same questions. So let's say this time we're setting up a child support payment. So this would actually be a deduction from their check. So we'll click next and then we can name this. Now keep in mind with something like child support there's different entities you pay this to. So you're going to want to set up one for each entity you need to pay it to. So I'm going to click next. Oop, let me go back. Enter the agency to who you want to pay this. We'll just say Department of Social Services. If it's not in the list I'll have to quick add it. And if I had an identifying number I'd pick it. Now let's talk about this liability count for just a moment. Actually what's going to happen is when you deduct the child support from your employee's paycheck it's going to put it into this payroll liabilities account because this is something you'll have to forward. Now what you probably want to do is have a sub account for this. So you can see that there's not one for this right now. So what you might want to do is actually add one. Remember to do that. You're going to put a colon at the end of liabilities. You're going to add child support. And then it's going to say child support is not on the account list and we'll set it up. And there's really nothing else you have to do here. Just save and close. And now that's going to be on the list permanently so you don't have to set it up again. All right, I'm going to click next. And then it asks about the tax tracking. And remember we saw this a second ago. This is actually for um, how that QuickBooks will actually display this on your tax forms. So we're going to leave this on none. We're going to click next. And then it asks if this particular item has any taxes that it's based on. So if it does, then you'll want to check those off. But if not, you'll just click next. Is this item based on quantity or hours? This would be a neither. Are you going to take it out of the gross or the net pay? And then do you have a default rate? So again, is this going to be the same rate for every employee or is it going to be different per employee? So we'll leave it on zero and hit finish. Now you can create what's called a scheduled payment. So I'll tell you about that in a little bit. That's all that little question was asking there. But now you'll see there's your child support set up. So you need to go through each one of these and set up all of the actual payroll items you're going to be deducting. Sometimes you add things to their check. So if you happen to, for example, um, give them a cell phone allowance or if you happen to pay them for mileage, those are additions to their check. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're setting these up. So now that you know how to set up payroll items, let's go to Section 3 and talk about how to actually set up the employees themselves. Hi, I'm Molly. Thanks for watching. If you would like to see similar videos, click the subscribe button on the right. I'll see you next week with additional videos.